lessons for Holy Week and Easter with new ears. The gospel lesson for this morning, for example, the account of the disciples meeting Jesus in the locked room, of course, in the absence of poor Thomas, this is one that I heard very differently this time. The text begins with the disciples locked in the house, as it says, for fear of the Jews. I think it's important to say every time we hear this, that the Jews is not a very good way for this to be described. The disciples and Jesus, of course, were Jews too, and they could not have imagined themselves as anything else. But by the time the Gospel of John was written down, Christians and Jews had grown apart, and Christians saw themselves as different. So when you hear this, it's more accurate to think that the people the disciples were afraid of were their fellow Jews, the religious authorities who had caused Jesus' death and who might now be on the way to harm them as well. It just needs to be said that there's no division here between Jews and non-Jews. But this year also, on top of that, I could imagine them easily to have been locked in this house together for fear of the virus, the way we are locked in our houses. Of course, it's not really responsible distancing to have a dozen mostly unrelated people cooped up together in close quarters, but we can at least imagine more vividly this year what it means to be confined to a place. Left to themselves, without even a TV to distract them, how the disciples must have talked and spun stories and imagined what was going to happen next and grieved at their loss of Jesus and cried and mourned. What would become of them? What would happen next? I don't want to overdraw the parallel, but our own current unavoidable reality leads me to ask whether we feel to some degree the same way. We have been locked away too, out of fear, out of fear of contagion and the fear of causing the contagion of others. We have not been able to gather for worship on Sunday for at least three weeks, and in some cases four. And we have at least three Sundays beyond this one to go before we will meet again. It's possible that not being physically able to go to church has made you feel more distant, like Jesus somehow was farther away or even somehow missing from your life. Perhaps not having Holy Communion in this season has made you feel a real absence of something that you have come to rely on as the disciples had come to rely on having Jesus to explain and guide and encourage them every single day. If that is the case, and you have felt a spiritual lack or separation in these last days, you'll be able to identify with the disciples' anxiety and their sense of bewilderment. What will happen next? Will there be a next chapter in this story? Are there worse things to come? We ask these questions too, caught as we are in the midst of this pandemic. But then there suddenly is Jesus in their midst. We don't know how or what he looked like. We know that he showed them his wounds so they would know for sure that it was he in the flesh, not a ghost, though he was one who was able to enter a locked room somehow. They must have been astounded and relieved and overjoyed and a little afraid all at the same time. And this complicated set of feelings is one I feel I can understand better this year and maybe you feel that way too. On the one hand, I've been so happy with the great outpouring of worship in our synod online with the very, very many different worship services we were treated to from our pastors and musicians, and we all owe them a tremendous debt of thanks for that. It was reassuring and comforting and also joyful to be able to worship together even in this new way. But it was also different. It was different, and we were different. We're in a different place than we were a few weeks ago. The good news of the resurrection, however, is the same. The joyful songs are the same. What was true before is still true now. Jesus is risen, and we shall arise. Jesus is with us still, with us again, and will be with us forever. That is worth an alleluia wherever you sit. 
And Jesus reached out to his disciples and offered them a greeting of peace. Peace be with you, Jesus says to the disciples. And I think he's really saying it to us as well here behind our locked doors in our uncertainty and anxiety. Peace to you. I hope you're finding peace in this Easter message too, because Jesus' victory over the grave is not just a memory of something that happened long ago in an empty tomb on the outskirts of Jerusalem. It is a present reality. It's a promise God is still keeping, a promise meant for each of us, that dying in a death like his, we will rise with Christ into a life like his. This is our Easter message, but it's also our every Sunday message when we gather every week on this day of the resurrection to hear the message again. This, that Jesus is risen and we shall arise, is our waking up message and our going to sleep message. Christ is risen. We have God's promise of life in him forever. As long as these earthly lives shall last, whatever befalls us within them, this we can count on to the end. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Irwin. At this time, we have a song that was as special music today. And I want to remind everyone that we are blending all different kinds of music together and styles of worship together. And so this is a song that was sent to us by Pastor Glenn Egertson and the LRCC staff. They have at, they um, wanted to send us a, an Easter song for the Easter season. And so I'm going to find that on my screen and share it with all of you. So if you, the words are on the screen, I would love to see everybody moving and dance into this song. Here we go. LRCC staff for sharing that video with you. And I just want to give you a little bit of an update on LRCC. Right now, they have had to uh, furlough or lay off um, all of their staff, except for their relatives that were there on the screen, um, and a few. And so we are praying for camps because this is a very hard time for camps right now. Um, and we are praying that we will be able to have Vacation Bible School with LRCC and that we will be able to send our kids to camp this summer. Um, but it's a hard time for them. So please keep them in your prayers and, um, and keep watching what's happening. And um, they are accepting donations as well um, because uh, 
Bible camp is super important. It was really important to me as a child, and I think it's been really important to the life of Salem children and families. So please, again, support our camps. Camps are very important. Um, at this time, we are going to try to do the Apostles' Creed together. And I have a slide for that because I do not expect people to have it memorized. So this is where I get into a little bit of a challenge with my computer. Here we go. So to, together today, we are going to, to repeat the Easter Creed. Remember, a creed says that we be, what we believe. A creed means that we believe in the, the triune God. And so together, we, are, we will be saying the Easter Creed. Let's begin. I believe in the God of Easter morning, who wakes us from our darkest dreams and leads us into the light of a new day who meets our pessimism with stunning hope of angelic proclamation. I believe in the God of Easter day, who beats us to the obstacles in our lives and empties the dark tomb for us, who appears in surprising ways when we least expect it, walking with us on our detours. I believe in the God of Easter evening, who breaks into our closets and prisons, bringing peace and crushing our fear, I believe in the risen Lord who meets us with wounds on his hands and feet, who grants us his spirit, sending us out to bring shalom to the world. Amen. And at this time, I would love it if we could unmute Karen Josephson, because we are going to um, do the prayers of the people at this time. If you have prayer requests, you may type them in the chat box or send them in an email to me. We have our prayer ministers are still working and um, we would like to be able to share our prayer concerns with each other. If you have public prayer concerns, go ahead and put those in the chat box if you are able, or again, send me an email. Um, is Karen Josephson unmuted? Yes, yes. okay. Um, let us pray. Trusting that God hears us, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Awesome God, you speak and the earth trembles. You display your majesty in the mountains and your mercy in the clouds. Grant that we discover your magnificence in all of your created world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, show your compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil and burdened with illness and fear. Today, we ask for your support to the family of Dean Lane. We also ask that you lay your healing hands on Jeff and Nancy and those we name out loud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of protection, come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick support and protect their families and friends from being infected. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, strengthen and encourage those in public health services in the medical profession. Give them strength and compassion. Sustain all workers and business owners who are suffering economic hardships. Bless our school children and their teachers who are working hard with new and creative teaching methods. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember all of your family, the entire human race, all of your creation, we place everything in your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we are going to be sharing the peace of the Lord, just as we talked about in our gospel text today and in our sermon and our children's sermon. Again, we are going to share the peace with each other. The way we do it through sign language is like this. We put our hands together one way and then we, and then we swap them over the other way. So peace, and then we put them out to the side. Be with, hands together, you. So let's try that together. Peace, be with you. And then my favorite, put your hands up like this, and also with you, and also with you. And now, Hans, if you wouldn't mind us unmuting everybody, we can all say it verbally, too, as well. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Peace everybody. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Okay, we'll go back and mute everyone at this time. won't be hugging each other. Oops, am I muted? 
I'm unmuted. Am I unmuted? You can hear me? Okay. Um, I think that the sign language form of peace be with you is the way we're going to be going in the future because I have a feeling that um, hugging each other and um, shaking hands is going to be something that's not going to be happening for a while, but that's okay because we're finding alternative ways to do that. So keep practicing peace be with you and also with you, with your family members. At this time, I would love for uh, Hans to unmute Pam Perry. She is going to be sharing with us her star gift word at epiphany time. Most of you received a star with a word on it for your theme of the year. And mine was truth. And I've talked about it a little bit before. Um, Pam Perry is going to tell us what her word was and how she has been feeling God's presence through that word. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, at church council on Tuesday night, uh, Pastor Amy uh, asked if anybody would be willing to share about their star word. And um, I've had a very interesting um, journey with my star word so far this year. Um, first of all, I, I was not at church on the day that we received our star words. Um, my mom passed away on Christmas Eve. And, you know, I was still not ready to be out among people. And I really regret that now. I wish I'd been there. I'm sort of starting to, I don't know if anybody else feels like that, but I'm starting to regret any church services I've missed because I miss them so much. But so then the next Tuesday at uh, church council meeting, she said, anybody who didn't get a star word, you know, here, draw one out. Well, I drew mine out and I was so excited to find out that my star word was rest. <laughs> Because I thought, oh, thank goodness, it's not going to be a hard one. Um, you know, most of you know I've been uh, working two full-time jobs now for about, well, going on three years and um, at least two and a half now and really pretty much without much of a break. Um, and they haven't just been three routine years either. They've been years filled with challenges, lots of challenges, one after another after another. And the true fact is that um, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> and so I thought, I'm, I'm so excited to get this star word of rest because this is gonna be, um, now I really can make this a priority and I can really start you know, setting good boundaries and getting things in place and really taking time to rest because this is critically important. And um, so the, the rest of the month of January, um, where it was full of challenges at school, but I, I, I was determined and I, and I took some Saturdays to just completely detach and rest. And I, I was feeling pretty good about that. And, and um, February came and we were just consumed with our um, WASC mid-cycle report at work. So not only was I not um, getting rest on weekends, I was working all the weekends <laughs> because in order to find time to really write that report, um, it was too hard to do during the week while children were present and teachers had needs and things were going on. So I ended up working the weekends. And, and so, um, you know, February kind of went by. And then um, uh, March came and I thought, okay, now I'm really going to get going on this resting thing. And, um, and then uh, people started getting sick. And then on the 13th of March, uh, we sat at a teleconference with the LA County Department of Health and realized that we were going to have to close our doors and switch to remote learning. And, and um, so uh, we did. But then I found myself really saying, okay, God, seriously, you give me this star word to rest. And, and when, how am I supposed to do that? You know, seriously, how am I supposed to do that? And then, um, about a week and a half ago, um, I, I've been doing my morning devotions with my Jesus Calling book. And um, I have a routine in my devotion. Um, I pray over my Bible or over my devotional booklet, whatever I'm using that day, um, and ask God to speak to me and, and um, say whatever he has for me that day. And so, um, I, I, and then I randomly open the Bible or open the book, and then I meditate on whatever is there. So I opened my Jesus Calling randomly, and I opened it to October 1st, and here's what it says. I am taking care of you. I'm not only committed to caring for you, but I'm absolutely capable of doing so. Rest in me, my weary one, for this is a form of worship. That was the good part. Here comes the next part. 
though self-flagellation has gone out of style, many of my children drive themselves like racehorses. They whip themselves into action, ignoring how exhausted they are. Guilty. They forget that I am sovereign and that my ways are higher than theirs. Underneath their driven service, they may secretly resent me as a harsh taskmaster. Mine hasn't necessarily always been so secret, but I have to confess there's been resentment about all the challenges that I've had to face. Their worship of me becomes lukewarm because I am no longer their first love. My invitation never changes. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. All of a sudden, I heard that verse differently than I think I've ever heard it before. Rest is not something I have to obtain. Rest is something that I am given when I take the time to go to the Lord, be with him, and worship him by resting peacefully in his peace. So I'm starting over with my star word in the last couple of weeks, knowing that, you know, the secret for me to really find rest is to find it in my meditation time with God and not to neglect that and to make sure that uh, I'm not driving myself uh, and building resentment about it, but that I'm keeping uh, my activities and my service in perspective and um, not neglecting my time with God as a result. So that's what I've been doing with my star word so far this year. I'm hoping that the second half of the year is going to be even more rewarding. Thank you, Pam. That was wonderful. So all of you out there have a star gift word. And if you don't, then email me or write it in the chat box. And I have extra star gifts to give out. And I want you to pay attention like Pam has been paying attention to her word and how it has, how God has spoken to her in many different ways at many different times of the, of the year. And she's got a whole bunch of the year left. So we'll continue, we'll check back with her on how the rest, how her word rest has, has been um, changing and evolving throughout the year. Um, with that being said, this is our offering time and Pam shared her offering of, of um, talking about her word. There are many ways that we can offer ourselves to God and to each other. If they're in the chat room, in the chat, Box, if you'd like to share some way that you have been helpful to someone this week or a way that you'd like to be helpful to someone this week, that would be one way to offer yourselves. Another way is um, to, to help us continue our ministries through financial offerings. If you have a, a smartphone, you may download the Give Plus app and then you type in, it'll ask you what church you'd like to give to, and that would be Salem Lutheran Church, if you wanted to give it to us. Um, you also may give online. You can see there's a, a, a short, short code here on the bottom for giving online. You also now can go to our website, which is SalemLutheranGlendale.org, and you can click on the Give uh, button that is on the front page. You may also mail in your financial offerings to the church. We are receiving mail once a week, and so that is another option for you. Again, giving ourselves of our, our time, our talents, and our financial treasures are important. And it is very important at this time not to forget that you are not physically at church to put your money in the offering, but it is important for us still to receive things so that we can continue our, our, our um, ministries throughout the world and throughout our community. With that being said, we're going to be starting Holy Communion. So if you are ready with your plate and your cup, let's see, where am I going to, here we go. We will be starting that at this time. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist us in your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who receive this sacrament that through the body and blood of your son, we may all know the comfort of your abiding presence. Amen. When our congregation gathers for the celebration of Holy Communion, we hear the story of God's mighty acts and loves shown to us in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving, we remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus gave bread, uh, took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. We are given the assurance of God's presence through this gift of his Holy Spirit. Now we bring to you this bread of life and cup of blessing that you may be strengthened through your participation in the body of Christ. At this time, we will say the Lord's Prayer, and then afterwards I will explain how we will eat, eat the, um, together. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I ask you to take your bread or cracker and to say to yourself or to one another, this is the body of Christ given for me, or this is the body of Christ given for you. And then I would like you to take the cup and say, this is the blood of Christ shed for me, or this is the blood of Christ shed for you. At this time, you may give it to yourself or to others within your household. The body of Christ is given for me. The blood of Christ is shed for me. And we will continue to share Holy Communion each week. So if you want to be prepared in the weeks to come to do that, and this is the way we'll do it. When I lift the bread, I would like you to lift the bread as well. Or when I lift the cup, you could lift the cup as well. Those are things that we will be learning as we do this together. This is all new for me as well. And now a, a communion blessing. Even if you're still sharing communion together, that's fine, but I'm going to do a blessing right now. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sin. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives them the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we have a special treat. We've got a musician in Minnesota that is going to be jo joining us and singing a song. The words will be on the screen for us to sing along. This again is a toe tapper. I noticed some of you were dancing with the, the, the LRCC song, which is great for Lutherans who usually don't dance in church. So hopefully you can get up and enjoy this song as well. It's called Joy. We know this song, we've sang it before. Joy. 
Thank you to Juliet for sharing that from, from Minnesota. So that's a wonderful, lovely, joyful song for us to leave on today. Um, we will be having chat groups at the end of worship today. Um, I'm going to make them larger chat groups because last week we had a bunch of people drop off and then end up being only alone in their chat group. If that does happen to you, go back to the main room and then we will probably that will become a, a chat group as well in case that that happens. So again, I will do chat groups after the benediction and the blessing. I'm so glad that you are here. We will be back here again next week, 10 o'clock on Sundays and 10 o'clock on Wednesdays for chapel if you'd like to join us for Kids Chapel as well. And now the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen just as he promised. Go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And at this time, I'm going to figure out the breakout rooms right now. We will do, let's see. If you want to unmute everybody, Hans, that's fine. Oh, that's it's over. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> that whoever needs to relax needs to have some little peace. Here we go. When, when, we, when I push the button, what will happen is you can press join if you'd like to participate and join. If you don't want to, we will see you again next week. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, you can go ahead and hit the join button right now. There should be five breakout rooms. These will be a little bit larger than the last week. Maybe I'll make them too large. I don't know. We'll see. Meeting. Mm -hmm.